Hello and welcome to this series of Biostatistics eConnect. I am Dr. Nilesh Pichadia and today we will discuss about the test of normality. First of all, let us discuss why do we do test of normality. Uh, because uh, when we analyze the data and we want to present the data in a conference, in a journal or for any publication, we need to use several central tendency and dispersion measures, for example, mean and median for central tendency and standard deviation in intercultural range for this person. Now, if your data is normally distributed, then you will go ahead uh, and use mean and standard deviation as a measure of central tendency and this person. But if you're, you have a skewed data, then better you should use median and intercultural range to describe your data. Moreover, uh, many statistical tests like t-test, ANOVA, Pearson correlation coefficient has the assumption of normal distribution. So if you want to use this test for your data analysis, your data should follow normal distribution. If your data is not normally distributed, you should go ahead with non-parametric tests such as Wilcoxon sign length test, man with u test or crystal wallace test. So to decide which test to use, whether to use parametric tests such as t-test, ANOVA or PSN correlation coefficient, you have to check your data for normality. And if your data fails to uh, follow the assumption of normality, then you go ahead with the non-parametric test. Now, what are the ways to test your data for normality? We have uh, two statistical tests such as Shapiro-Wilk test and Kolmogorov-Smino test to test the normality. Moreover, we can assess the data for skewness and kurtosis. We can visualize our data using QQ and PP plot, or we can have the diagrams like histogram, stem and leaf plot, or box plot to see whether our data follows normal distribution or not. Now, I'll take you to SPSS and uh, see how the data uh, is assessed using the statistical test for Sapira uh, uh, and Kolmogorov may not test. So on screen you can see uh, SPSS with uh, hypothetical data of 317 patients uh, for two quantitative variables that is RBS leading and height. Uh, suppose we want to assess our variables RBS leading and height for normality then we should click on the analyze, then go to descriptive statistics and click on explore command. SPSS gives the uh, test of normality within the explore command. So we have two variables to be checked for normality. So we'll take those variables to dependent list after selecting them and clicking this button. Then in the statistic option, will keep the option descriptive checked as it is and click on continue. In the plots, we have the test for normality that is normality plot with test. So we can we have to check this command to get the result of Kolmogorov Spino and Sarkovic test. Moreover, if you want to visualize your data on a histogram, you should also check histogram and stem and leaf is another plot where you can visualize your data. So click on continue. Then in the option, we'll keep all the options as it is and we'll click on OK. So in the response, we get a series of output. Uh, we begin the analysis by uh, reading the descriptive statistics. So in the descriptive statistic, we can see uh, many of the output uh, variables given in that. Uh, our interest is in the skewness and kurtosis values. So for RBS reading, the skewness and kurtosis values are given here. The skewness value is 2.9 and kurtosis value is 12.8 for RBS reading. For height, the skewness value is minus 0 0.007 and kurtosis value is minus 0 0.33. Now, if the skewness and kurtosis values are within minus two to plus two, it is considered that the data follows normal distribution. So on the basis of values of skewness and kurtosis, we can say that RBS reading does not follow normal distribution, but height 
does follow normal distribution by skewness and kurtosis values the next dialog box is test for the normality here uh, we uh, would see the statistic value and corresponding significance value for both these tests such as kolmogorov-smirnov and shapirovich test now uh, these two tests kolmogorov-smirnov and shapirovich test compares our distribution of variable with the hypothetical normal distribution and if in response you get the significance value of less than 0 0.05 uh, the meaning is that that your uh, uh, data your uh, variable is away from the hypothetical normal distribution it is significantly di different from hypothetical normal distribution but if you have values p values more than 0 0.05 then your distribution does not differ significantly for from the hypothetical normal distribution so here for rbs reading our significance value is 0 0.00 so we can say that rbs reading does not uh, uh, is uh, uh, does not uh, is not similar to the uh, normal distribution whereas height p value is 0 0.2 that means the height follows normal distribution when uh, uh, when to select which test is based upon the sample size of your uh, data suppose you have more than 50 sample size then go ahead and use kolmogorov spinner test but if you have less than 50 sample size then it is better to use sapiro will test now the next thing which we can do is to visualize our data on a histogram for rbs reading you can see that the rbs reading shows skewed distribution because majority of the data is centered around the 100 to 150 rbs reading the mean is 140 but we have the outliers on the positive side because some of the patient is having rbs readings around 300 400 or up to 50. so we can say that our rbs reading is positively skewed and it does not follow normal distribution additional diagram to see the same thing is stem and leaf diagram it is very similar to histogram a uh, clockwise 45 degree flipped histogram you can say is stem and leaf diagram but here some additional information is there in the sense that you can see the frequency as well as observations in the stem and leaf diagram but basically the conclusion is similar to what we have done for the histogram the next is normal QQ plot. QQ plot stands for quintile quintile plot. And in the QQ plot, it is basically a scatter diagram where your data is uh, plotted against expected normal values. And there is a slanting line. If your the dots are falling on the lines or very near to the lines, we can say that the uh, uh, data distribution is not significantly deviated from the normal distribution but if the dots are significantly away from the line uh, they are much farther from the line then there is deviation from the normal distribution as it is observed in uh, rbs reading normal qq plot we can see that on the higher side there is very much deviation from the uh, line and the data is not uh, following the normal distribution Many times it is very difficult to judge if the dots are falling very much near to the line. So there is another QQ plot that is known as detrended normal QQ plot where there is a horizontal line and the dots are falling around the line or away from the line that we can judge. Basically, detrended normal QQ plot is enlarged or magnified version of normal QQ plot where the differences are magnified. Uh, so that is also helpful certain times. The next diagram SPSS gives us is box and whisker plot. Box and whisker plot is five point diagram. We have a median in uh, as a central thick line within the box. We have 25th and 75th percentile and we have whisk whiskers for uh, minimum and maximum. Uh, there are a few data outside the uh, box and whisker that shows outliers and extreme values basically uh, box and whisker plot may not be a very suitable diagram to diagnose the normality because even if uh, there is a very uniform box and whisker 
it can be misleading certain times as we have seen for the uh, height variable in the, the result of the Kolmogorov Pino and Shapira Wilk test that it follows normal distribution the histogram of height shows a very good bell shaped normal distribution curve which confirms our finding of test interpretation the next is stem and leaf diagram which again shows the same picture over here uh, in contrast to the normal QQ plot of RBS reading, here you can see that for height variable, the dots are following almost on the line and which confirms our finding of height following normal distribution. In the deep rendered normal QQ plot, you can see that all the dots are very much closer to the horizontal line, a zero line, and that suggests uh, uh, our data following normal distribution. This is a box and whisk up plot, a very uniform box and whisk up for height variable. So this suggests that height follows normal distribution, but the another variable that is RBS reading does not follow normal distribution. So to summarize, we have various ways to diagnose our data for normal distribution. Uh, if you have small data size, say for example, less than 50 samples, then you should go ahead with Shapira Wilk test because it gives more power when you assess the data uh, of small sample size using Shapira Wilk test. Otherwise, uh, if you have large data size, then you can uh, see the histogram to see the uh, bell shaped curve, whether that is there or not in your uh, distribution of the data. Otherwise, uh, kurtosis and skewness values are also helpful along with uh, QQ plot and Kolmogorov Spinner test. So that concludes uh, test of normality. Thank you so much.